the school system will never teach you about money. The school system was designed to teach you to be an employee, which is important, or a doctor or a lawyer, a specialist, but never about money. So my father was the head of education, PhD, all that stuff. I go home and ask him, I said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and says, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. I said, but you get a job to earn money. He goes, no, you're supposed to just get a job. I went, no, 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 no. Isn't the purpose of a job to earn money? He goes, you're correct. I said, so why don't I just learn about money? I can skip the job part, you know? And he got flustered and he said, look, and my father was for Japanese, very tall, six foot four, and imposing man, good guy. But he says, if you want to learn about money, why don't you ask your best friend's father about money? And I said, why? That's Mike. So I asked him. He says, because Mike's father is an entrepreneur. And I said, what, am, what are you? He says, I'm an employee. I'm a government employee. I went, oh, what's the difference? He says, the difference is an entrepreneur must know about money, or they're, they're no longer entrepreneurs. And he says, an employee doesn't have to know anything about money, because the government will take care of them, the company will take care of them. So I'm kid, I'm all confused. But I took my dad's advice, and I trundled over to Mike's father's office and knocked on his door, and I said, hey, I'm here, nine years old. Teach me about money. He says, beat it, kid, you know. So my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. And now I'm nine years old, my head's going cracking in half. He says, you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid? I said, okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's what entrepreneurs figure out. So how do I learn about money? So he would just break out a Monopoly game board. So I would work for free. I'd pick up cigarette butts and get hotels and restaurants and I would clean and do menial tasks. And as I got older, I started getting into office work and marketing and accounting. And I was an apprentice basically, but I always worked for free. And he would teach me about money. But the way he taught me about money was playing Monopoly. And I finally, one day, I got upset. I said, well, when are you going to teach me about money? He says, what do you think we're doing? <laughs> we're playing Monopoly. He goes, no, 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 no. What do you think we're doing? So we're playing Monopoly. He says, what do you think we're doing? So I don't know. I'm teaching you about money. And then that's why, you know, you have one green house. You know, he says, there's many formulas for great success in money. There's thousands of them, but one of the best ones found on the game of Monopoly. It still is today. Four green houses, one red hotel. Mm -hmm. I said, what? He says, one of the greatest ways to acquire great wealth is playing Monopoly in real life. Four green houses, one red hotel. Well, is that all there is? He goes, that's it. And he says, what do you think I'm doing? And I went, I don't know. So then he took me out and he showed me his greenhouses. And 10 years later, when I was 19, I was now in school in New York, and I come back to Hawaii, and Rich Dad had bought the biggest piece of land smack dab in the middle of Waikiki Beach. And when you go to Waikiki Beach today, you'll see the Hyatt Regency Hotel. That was his hotel. Just like the game of Monopoly. Just like the game of Monopoly acquired assets and they became bigger assets. He just kept a, 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 what's called an assemblage because that property wasn't that big at that time. So he had to buy out all the small guys because Waikiki was a little dirt water, little town. So he'd buy out this shop owner and buy that shop owner. And it took him a while, but he finally assembled this large piece of property. And then he, then he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel. Hmm. You know, it I, just, and it just sold for $800 million. So that's how I learned about money. And that's because he refused, he refused to accept a paycheck. He says, the moment you accept a paycheck, your brain goes dead. 
You know, he just bought, he just, he just got paid. He says, as long as you're hungry, you'll think. And he was a great, great teacher. So today when people ask me what I do, they, they know me as the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I just say I play Monopoly. So I own greenhouses, I own big hotels, I own oil wells, golf courses, businesses. So that's kind of the story. And you know, I play, I play a Monopoly in real life. Uh, I don't need a job, I don't need a retirement. I don't want the government to take care of me. But I felt a social responsibility to teach. Mm -hmm. And that's what my rich dad did for me. And, um, <clears throat> you know, Einstein said, you know, imagination is more important than knowledge, but knowledge empowers imagination. And what most people lack is real business knowledge, like accounting, you know, like debt, like taxes. You gotta know that stuff, but they don't teach it in school to anybody. So, and, and then when people ask me, how did your rich dad learn this when your poor dad, a PhD, didn't? And the answer is very simply, my rich dad, who's kind of my best friend's father, his father died when he was 13. So his so rich dad had this family business at 13 to run. So he had to drop out of school, which was his blessing. You know, those blessings and, you know, sometimes a blessing doesn't look like a blessing, but it turned out to be a blessing. And then his teachers became his bookkeeper, his accountant, his attorney, his banker, his real estate agents. So he has what I call real teachers, not these fake teachers in school. You see, most teachers in school, they're out of ethics. They teach subjects they, don't, they themselves don't practice. You know, I had the same problem in my MBA program. I got into arguments with the marketing teacher because the guy didn't have a business. And then I got into arguments with the uh, accounting teacher because the accounting teacher didn't know accounting. I knew more about accounting than him because I actually worked in bookkeeping in my rich dad's companies. And so I'm not an accountant, but I understand accounting. So that was the end of my school years because I understood what a fake teacher is. A fake teacher is somebody who just wants a job and they'll teach anything. You know, they teach how to shine shoes if you pay them more money. But they really don't know what they're teaching. For example, my calculus teacher, I was at, went to military school in New York, and um, I asked the teacher, I said, you know, it's, I'm in my third year of calculus now. It was, called, it was called strength of materials. I said, am I ever going to use this stuff? He goes, no. You know, I said, why do you teach it? I was like, I paid. I said, do you ever use it? He goes, no. And that's why, you know, I, you have to, in life, one of the things I suggest to people, you gotta find a real teacher versus a fake teacher. And a fake teacher is somebody who doesn't do what they teach. And a real teacher is doing what they teach every day.